Leader Gable, you and I had a discussion in committee yesterday, and I had asked you questions based on what one of the witnesses, Mr. Gilligan, had brought forth about the, the broadness of the language in this bill. I want to just point out to you again that it, this message, or the, the, what's in the bill specifically, refers to literally any person or public official for any public or private association, agency, corporation, entity, institution, or employer to take any measures or impose any requirements, including but not limited to any measures or requirements that involve the provision of services by a physician or healthcare personnel, again, not limited to that, intended to prevent the contraction or transmission of COVID-19. Why is this written so broadly? Uh, it, it mirrors the language in the uh, uh, Health Care Right of Conscience Act. Okay. Well, where in the Health Care Right of Conscience does it give us any definitions about the prevention of contraction or, prevent, or the contraction or transmission of COVID-19? No, but, but the beginning part does. It speaks for itself. It doesn't need a definition. That's in the beginning part of the Health Care Right of Conscience Act? It doesn't need a definition. It speaks for itself. I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying because you have a mask on. It speaks for itself. It doesn't need a definition. Wow, that's amazing because I know doctors that disagree about how it, we could mitigation approach... Mitigation of COVID-19, they disagree. About how it could be contracted, how we could prevent transmission. Really? I'm not a misinformation person. I know you know that. But I have had discussions with people that disagree, that are reasonable people, about what we could or should do. Other countries disagree with our approach. Other states the, disagree with our approach. Uh, we I aren't the absolutely perfect. the community is pretty clear about what we can do. I wish I could understand you more clearly. I think the medical community is very clear about what we can do for mitigation. Well, I guess that could lead to the next part of my question. Since we're not putting any thresholds in here, anyone can interpret it any way they want to because we're not asking for medical personnel to be involved. Anyone can be making these decisions. I, I'm not clear about your question. Okay, well, again, you put a not limited to clause in here, so everything that I said means that anyone can interpret this any which way that they so choose and not be subject to health care right of conscience with respect to a definition that they choose of COVID-19 transmission or contraction in any way that that could be prevented by intention. I mean, this is really broad. I, I disagree. It's, I don't think it's very broad at all. It's very specific. A leader, um, Representative Luft, will give three minutes. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, leader Gable, we're going to move on because we had this discussion yesterday and it's it about the same as it is right now. I want to talk to you about, you said that many times, both yesterday and today, that if someone has an objection to the vaccine, for whatever reason, they can still use the federal law that applies. Correct? If, if their employer is requiring it, yes. This is not a mandate to anyone. Employers... It's a restriction of a right. No. Okay. It's clarifying the intent of the Healthcare Right of Conscience Act. Okay, which also includes the patient, not just the provider. And we're talking about the patient in this case, the patient's choosing for a reason of their own conscience not to participate in a vaccine. Correct? It clarifies that's what people are, when that's this 50,000 plus people who responded via witness slips yesterday, that's their impression, that's their that's feeling their about this. That's their impression, correct, but... Not yours. They're, mis they're misrepresenting this law. Well, man, I beg to differ. I really do. I guess my question was going to be, if federal law still apply, then what's the absolute need for this? Why is this so important? Because it's being improperly misused. So, because they have a conscience? No, because it's being applied in the, in the context of employers and employees. And this law, the intent of this law was to be uh, used in the healthcare setting, 
between is, is a vaccine not a form of health care? It, it it can be in the but that no it's it's a what what was the question? Is it a health care? Please restate your question. Is a vaccine not a form of health care? Yes, but employer and employees are not. Employees, employees are not subject to health care. They don't get health care. What are you saying? Not, you know, the, the bill, as I've stated a number of times, the health care right of conscience was established to, to protect health care providers uh, who is, do not want to provide abortion or other reproductive that was, care that's, services. Okay. Is there a section in the Health Care Right of Conscience Act that says that patients have a right to object to treatment? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's not, it's, it's for the, it's for the health care provider, not the patient. The patient is trying to get a service that the health care provider does not want to provide. I, I, I think that this is absolutely incorrect. I disagree. Well, I'm going to read it to you in a minute once we find it. So, you, I mean, to be crystal clear, you don't believe there's any part of the Health Care Right of Conscience Act that protects the patient. It is only meant to protect a health care provider. Representative Meyer, would you be willing to give us three minutes? That's not what I said. Okay, then please restate what you said because that's how you answered the question I asked. The intention of this bill was to uh, clarify that the, that the Health Care Right of Conscience Act was to apply for to healthcare providers to, to uh, and allow them not to provide abortion or reproductive rights care if they don't want to. So when I read this, where is it again here? It is the public policy of the state of Illinois to respect and protect the right of a conscience, of conscience, right of conscience, of all persons who refuse to obtain, receive, or accept are all engaged in the delivery of arrangement for and payment of health care services. I believe that talks about a patient. They're refusing to obtain, receive, or accept treatment. Well, I believe people are using this as a loophole to get out of uh, protections that their providers, that their employers are let, let, Let's repeat the, the point here. Protect the right of conscience of all persons who refuse to obtain, receive, or accept. That's a patient issue. That's in the current act. In relationship to reproductive health. Really, what part of it is in there? Because I'm looking at if 745 ILCS 70 2, blah, 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 paragraph 5302. If you can point out to me where it says that in here, I'd be grateful. I don't see it. I believe that the original intent of, that, of the bill was not to apply in this type of setting. Well, I have some incredible news here. What we write in the bill matters. Not what we say on the floor. That helps, but this, this is pretty clear. This is actually very clear that people expect a right. They have a right right now. They have a right. And this bill effectively changes that right when it comes to COVID-19. So I'm going to move on here to the last thing I wanted to say. I asked you this yesterday, and I got no response. So I'm going to ask it again. A young woman in my district went to her employer, who is part of our government. She's a public servant. She's a young woman with a great future in front of her, beginning her career. She wants certainty about what she can expect wait, wait, from her job. We're telling her that she has to get vaccinated. She talks to her doctor. Her doctor says, well, I can't absolutely guarantee you there'll be no long-term side effects from the vaccine, so she has a conscience issue. 
She wants to start a family. She wants to do other things in life, things that we can't absolutely guarantee. I wish we could. So we are giving her effectively a choice because we're taking this right, in effect, away. So her choice is she continue her employment and she can feed herself and her family or she has to take this vaccine. What am I supposed to tell her? We're not taking anyone's rights away. This is between her and her employer. You've got to read the whole act. The act has a right in it. I read it to you twice. It's a right, and you're negating that right with this amendment to this act. So clearly, you don't have an answer for her question. Her question is valid. She's a public servant. She's not spreading misinformation. She's not an anti-vaxxer. She has a real concern. Her conscience is heavy. I want to support her. I want to support her right. If she has a religious objection, she, she, a religious objection she can apply. To the bill. Ladies and gentlemen, our job here is to protect the public, to promote public safety, while we protect people's rights. This healthcare right of conscience is real. It exists today and it protects patients. What we're doing today negates part of that. We're creating fear in our state unnecessarily. I want people to realize this has more unintended consequences based on how broadly this bill is drafted and what its intent is. And I have true concerns about the fact that this is a clarification of existing law, which means that they're going to say, we're going to pass it with 60 votes. It won't go into effect until June, but since it's a clarification, hey, you know what? That counts for right now. I have real concerns about this. Please vote no. Further discussion, Leader Welter.